On the agenda tonight, we're going back to the late 80s. We're going to be taking a look at Ricky Van Shelton and Jack Green, and they're going to be performing Statue of a Fool. Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So I think this performance is about three minutes in length, so it's not going to be a long video for tonight. I have run the vocals through the pitch monitoring software, so I can reference that to make a few points. Let's jump into the performance. Jack Green, Statue of Fool. A statue of a fool made of stone The image of a man who let love slip through his hands And then just let him stand there all alone There only Spain A gold tear should be played Honor the million tears He's cried His eyes would show so everyone would know concealed is a broken heart inside so fill the statue have it. Unfortunately, the video on YouTube just cut out very quickly, so that's why I jumped in there <laughs> before any adverts start, all that kind of stuff. But what I love about this performance is, I mean, first of all, yeah, the vocals, which you will get into, but the full band sound, and it seems like it was always the case with country music on TV. When you had a performance, it was always fully live, and they had a full band, and when I say a full band, I mean a full band. I mean, you've got backing singers in there, we've got at least a couple of guitars. You could see in the intro as well, we had that pedal steel guitar going on. So, we've got a lot of cover from a guitar perspective, and the reason that I mention this is because nowadays, you'll see lots of live performances where Either, you know, the singer isn't singing, but if the singer is singing live, and it's a live mic, Generally, they won't be playing their instrument or sometimes the whole band are just pretending to play as we've looked at in previous videos where all the mics are set up but they're not actually playing. It's just for the visual to pretend that they are. But yeah, going back to this performance, it's fully live 
and everything that's being played from a guitar perspective is being played by the band. But what I love about this is that Ricky, when he's singing, he's playing at the same time, but we're not hearing what he's playing. So it's, it's kind of the exact opposite of, of what you get nowadays. We're hearing the guitar that they should be playing, but they're not really playing it. But here, because it's the opposite, it means that, you know, Ricky is so versed at playing the guitar and singing this that even when we're not going to hear his guitar, he's still playing everything. And I can tell you that he's playing everything technically correctly. He's going through his finger style on that right hand. He's getting all of the chord shapes in there. And you'll see at the end of the song, he actually does kind of break off from the playing in order to then have the big finale, the final note of the song, and he actually grabs Jack as well to get closer in. So you get that great shot, but he's not playing his guitar. So you don't really miss it because it's all being played behind him. But it means that I always say that playing and singing at the same time doubles the difficulty, but playing and singing at the same time when you can't even hear your playing, I think that probably ups it a notch because you sometimes need that feedback of your guitar. And when I say feedback, I mean being able to hear your guitar and the chord in order to, you know, time your vocals and get everything phrased exactly as you would do when you're playing it live. What I'm saying is it shows the level of professionalism that even when you can't hear the guitar, players and artists, singers like Ricky and Jack, they have this just subconscious ability because they are so well versed at playing their instrument that it it doesn't take any thought to do it they can still focus on their vocal and this all happens in the background and when i'm talking about the technique look out for ricky's right hand because you can see that he's arpeggiating these chords with finger style on the right hand meaning that he's picking out notes from the chord in that sequence with the right hand into the C, I think. But anyway, this isn't going to be an instructional video about how to, how to play it on the guitar. But I just want to point out that all of this is going on, but we can't hear it. It's all being played behind Ricky and Jack. But this is the point that it's all just so natural for guys like Ricky to play and sing at the same time. Because back in the day, it was a given, especially actually in country music from all the videos that I've looked at, Generally, the singers always either, you know, played sometimes, you know, violin or fiddle, <laughs> uh, acoustic guitar, sometimes electric guitar, mandolin, banjo. They always had some kind of instrumental ability where they would accompany themselves while they sang. And it would often be to a level where they could break off into a solo and hold their own on that instrument and play it to a very high level technically. And that's something that I think in country music, it's just part of the way that people learn to play and learn to sing, that they always have an instrument. It's never just that they can only sing. So we'll just jump into a little bit of the isolated vocal to point out a few things about Ricky's voice and Jack's voice. Somewhere there should be For all the world to see A statue of a fool Made of stone And I'm just going to jump in here because I mean, with the pitch monitoring software, we can see that Ricky is really accurate pitch wise, but he has this very wide vibrato. And that's why this yellow line is moving up and down on this pitch graph. And you might think, and certainly when I heard Ricky's voice for the first time, it was something that reminded me of Elvis Presley. And I'm not saying, I'm not comparing them and I'm not saying they're exactly the same, but I'm saying that you can hear in the vibrato, and actually, 
in a bit of the sound, the nasality in the sound, the way that it's a bit covered, let me take it back to the beginning, and yeah, if some of you can hear a certain element of that, we can point out exactly why that is. Somewhere. So, I mean, straight away we can see that we start bang on this C4, we then come down and then go back up to the C4. But we have this kind of it's kind of that covered sound somewhere rather than somewhere and opening up and you know that puts it in a particular place and it gives you that balance of yeah not being too open and not being kind of too nasal or too covered but it's that that kind of sound to it so tonally and placement wise it's in a very similar place to that of Elvis's voice. And when we listen to that vibrato, we know from the analysis videos that we've done on Elvis that his voice had this wide vibrato, you know, sometimes two, three, even more than that semitones when he kind of really let loose with that vibrato. But the speed of it, that's the other thing that once you start combining speed with covering a lot of range pitch wise within the vibrato then it starts to get a very unique sound and a specific sound so if I went somewhere and did it slowly like that it doesn't really sound like anything <laughs> it just sounds like singing holding a note adding vibrato whereas once you go somewhere ah, ah, and you start speeding it up it starts to take on yet a more dramatic persona. <laughs> it starts to get its own kind of sound. So when we go back to listening to Ricky's voice. Somewhere. Where, it's actually quite fast and we can see that, but it's the pitch that's covered within the vibrato. And the reason why this stands out is because the wider the pitch that you cover, the harder it is to do quickly because you don't have time to get your vocal cords to go up and down to these notes you know as qu quickly as it is happening the faster you do it the harder it's going to be because if i go somewhere you know you can hit those peaks of, of vibrato very easily because it's slower as soon as you now go somewhere and, and you try and speed that up keeping control of it is really difficult. And, you know, this is why guys like Ricky, they've got this natural vibrato in there that is just, you know, it just happens to be quite similar. When I said earlier, here we've got a great example of, you know, we're on the A3 here, we've gone up by a semitone, we've gone down by a semitone and a little bit more than that. So you can say two and a half maybe. And when we're talking about that range of vibrato that we had, with Elvis, like I said, between two and three semitones, sometimes a little bit more than that. And then when we come down here, we're actually going a little bit beyond the F3 and one, two, and we are getting close to three semitones of vibrato. So this is it. It's that tonal placement that Ricky has to his voice, but his vibrato, once you pair these together, we're starting to get characteristics. It's almost like a memory or, or something that just tweaks in your ear to say, oh, hang on, that is a little bit of that kind of voice. And you will get this with different singers, especially uh, when, <laughs> maybe when you've watched a lot of analysis videos, but maybe when you're tuned into hearing a lot of quality voices, you'll start to hear elements of great singers' voices in each other's voices because they have so many things in common. We can also see on the pitch monitoring software how Ricky, in general, he doesn't have this wide vibrato all the time. Just sometimes it'll be in there and that's kind of what tweaks your ear in that direction. But then for the most part, you'll see it's a lot more subtle. It's a lot tighter. Slip through his hands And there just let him stand there all alone. 
So there was a good example, the B3, the way that we have this vibrato now directly over the note, but it is more controlled. We're not even going a semitone each way. There on his face, a should be played. And interestingly, the pitch monitoring software that we can see, it's jumping around because we not only have harmony vocals in parts of this performance, but here it's jumping around because it's picking up the pedal steel guitar. And the, well, I mean, why that's interesting is because the isolating software of trying to pick up that voice, it's listening out for a human voice, but it shows you how similar pedal steel guitar is to the human voice because it doesn't have frets, it slides. It's exactly like a pair of vocal cords. So it's great that, you know, it shows how expressive that instrument is but when you put it in with a voice, it just complements it so well. When you listen to a great singer and a great pedal steel guitar player, then, I mean, there's nothing else like it. And it is just undoubtedly country music. You know, you just know that sound. Honor the million tears he's cried. And listen to that control that Jack has with his vibrato with these waves that we can see, it's a, a little bit further spread out. The frequency is different to that of Ricky's vibrato. So it means that it's slower. So let's have a listen to that again. Rather than and kind of being faster. So the other thing about this and, you know, why I point it out is because when they harmonize with each other, you'll find that they naturally relax into each other's vibrato. And it's something that, yeah, it's going to be a subconscious thing, but they're not applying it at the same rate because we know that Ricky had that faster vibrato. Jack has this slower vibrato. So build me a statue. Just a tiny detail here, but it makes all the difference to the blending of the vocals. The way that Ricky, when he's singing here, he's not actually doing the vibrato that he did previously. And I mean, listen out for Ricky's voice, how, you know, before it's qu quite dramatic. So it will be like, mm -hmm, and they'd be covering quite a lot of pitch, but listen to how straight his voice is now. So So that all, he's basically doing that. So that all, there's hardly any vibrato, but that's because they're now harmonizing with each other. And again, it's just this deeper level of appreciation of blending your voices when you're singing together and not being totally separate so that you've got two lead vocalists who sound like they're different. You still want it to sound like one voice, but these are the tiny details that great singers, I think, do naturally. When they sing with a, another singer, they start making these adjustments so that their voices blend as well as they can. It seems like when there's a lead vocal, so when we go over to Ricky here, the lead vocal takes preference vocally between these two. So. Ricky gets back into his vibrato, but in the background, Jack now is straightening, straightening out his vocal without applying his vibrato. Thank you, sir. Then it's cried, oh, the world's greatest fool. Yeah. Nah. Th those are the notes that Jack's singing, but it's a lot more subtle now. He's not using that vibrato so it's allowing 
Ricky's voice, I always say that when you apply vibrato and you cover a lot of, you know, pitch with that particular vibrato, it's going to make it sound more dramatic. So when you've got a lead vocalist, that's where the drama is. That's your focus. That's what it should be. It's the lead vocal. And when you have a harmony behind it, if the harmony is dramatic and also going ah, and applying lots of vibrato, they're going to clash. So again, Jack is just straightening out his ah, his vocal to keep it in the background, but compliment Ricky's lead vocal. And Even there, and we've got backing vocals coming in from the backing singers here, but Jack's still keeping it a lot straighter than when he was singing his lead vocal. And there, listen to Jack's voice, it was me. Hardly any vibrato there. And then there's a tiny bit now coming in, but it blends because they're matching each other. And you really get to appreciate that right at the end. Just to mention before we finish that Jack is performing this about 20 years after his number one that he had in 1969. And Ricky, had his number one with this in 1989 or 1990, around that kind of time. I'm not sure when this performance is from. I did say late 80s. In the original video, of which there is a link in the description below, if you want to go and watch that video multiple times, I think it is stated as 1989 for this performance. I'm not sure. So it's going to be around that kind of time. But the reason that they're performing this together is because they both had a number one hit with it. And I don't think two people or singers who had a number one hit with it had performed it together so that's the reason for it on this particular show but you can go and check out that original video in the description below but thank you guys for requesting and suggesting this video for me to take a look at as always keep those suggestions and requests coming in the comment section below let me know what you guys think and if you did enjoy this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and i'll see you guys at the next one rock